Good morning, church family. Welcome to Village Point United Methodist Church. I'm so pleased to see all of you here this morning, and I hope you all are as pleased to be here. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we are blessed to be a part of your flock. We are blessed to be a part of this family. Thank you for allowing us to be able to gather together in this house of worship this morning to learn more about you, to praise you, and to ask for your help. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Now, we are going to sing this morning. You must keep your masks on if you want to sing. Um, otherwise, I guess you can just hum along. <laughs> Please, please stand. Thank you. 
Please be seated. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start off with announcements. Um, offering plates are at both doors. So this one back here and then the one that we enter and exit for the back room. You may give as you come in or as you depart. The tile floors will be cleaned tomorrow, so there's going to be a pretty strong odor in the building for a couple of days. If anybody should happen to come by, you might not want to. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, I don't know of other announcements, any others that I'm unaware of. Okay. We have at least one birthday. I understand Chuck's birthday. <laughs> Any other birthdays? Just raise your hand. Ah, got, okay, looks like Rock has a birthday. Ah, there we go. Two birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And I believe you'll understand me better if I take that off while I'm doing this. <laughs> All right, so I, I tried to touch base with most everyone. I'm not sure I reached out to everyone, but um, we'll start with joys. Of course, Jeff and I have a huge joy. Our family gathered for my son to repeat his wedding vows in the manner they had originally planned. And, it was a good time to be had by all, and I'm always happy to have my family gathered together. Um, so that was our joy of the recent couple of weeks. Any other joys? Okay. We have a pretty lengthy prayer concern list. Poor Mel's family, there's all kinds of things going on. Her cousin Nick has... COVID um, with blood clots and on a ventilator, and my understanding is, is he did lose his leg. He did lose his leg. Okay. Um, her brother is in the hospital with CHF. Her sister Jackie also has CHF with COVID. Um, our Betty is in the hospital with low blood pressure. Jonathan and Kaylee, who are is Donna's grandson. Um, the, her pregnancy continues to be very high risk, so needs a lot of prayer. Tammy has had foot surgery this week. Joyce's brother Clarence needs our prayers. Patsy's son Scott continues to need our prayers. Um, our country at large needs our prayers. I think probably everyone's well aware of that. <laughs> and the people of Honduras, I don't know how many of you realize that Hurricane Iota is headed that way, and they've already been pretty devastated by a hurricane. Um, so I would say the world needs prayer right now because the weather pattern this year has been absolutely incredible. And that is all I have. Any other? Yes. My wife is a member of this church. We're new, and she is in a nursing home, and she's not on a program, and her name is Adair Hadley. Okay. Okay, so if we can, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, again, we are so blessed to have each other, to have this church. There's people out there in the world that don't have the sense of your peace. And this church is able to provide that sense of peace and great understanding that comes with being part of a church family. We continue to thrive, although this is a very difficult time for people's health 
and in the world of politics and the future of our country as we know it. There's much illness, and we would ask blessings on each of the people that was mentioned earlier, as well as those concerns that are on our hearts that may not have been mentioned today. You know us, you've known us as we were knit in our mother's wombs, and you continue to be supportive of us if we allow you to be. Thank you for that blessing. Please be with us and our concerns as we go forth from this place. Allow us to listen to the words that you've placed in Richard's heart so that we can leave this place with an uplifted spirit and the ability to reach out to others as you would have us do. We ask all of this in your heavenly name. Amen. Okay, we're singing again. <laughs> So if you will stand, keep your masks on, and our second. You know, COVID is the biggest challenge I've ever had in the ministry. Uh, and one of the things that, and there are a number of things in this church that affirm the church to me and, and keep me going in the ways that they do is people find us, y'all, and I happen to be one of you, and they come to this place and they like what they experience. And I'm glad y'all were here before covid we got some here that weren't here before COVID and hadn't had the full experience of what it's like to be at Village Point when we were full and all the excitement and joy, but you, you, you were here then. So you know the fullness of our church and how we're challenged. But um, Wade and Nancy Bird uh, live in Clarkton. They have a farm and their son's with them now running that as well as daddy and Nancy's the ultimate cook. She knows how to make pizza. She makes her own dough. You know, I was telling her about Diane. I like to build a pizza, and she kind of put me to shame. And, and, and so um, they have come here. They have a place out on Ocean Island. Uh, and thanks to, to one other visitor of this church, y'all found this place. And I will be texting York Farr today uh, after worshiping telling him that y'all joined this church you're already a baptized believer coming from the church of jesus christ having made a commitment 
to Him. And I just simply ask you, will you be faithful here by your presence, by, by, by your giving, by your witness to Christ? Will you be faithful to the United Methodist Church? If so, say I will. I will. will you be faithful accordingly to uh, Village Point? I am so glad you're here. I wish I could hug you and kiss your cheek, Nancy, but they kind of got that prohibited right now. I didn't want to kiss yours, to be honest with you. Uh, and and, and uh, so we're glad you're here. Let's let them know we're glad they're here. Hey, God. God bless you. Love you. It's just always good to have people who find us as a destination on Sunday mornings uh, in the ways that you do. Um, and they brought their own entourage. They tell me their last name is Brown. I was a Brown. And so I figure y'all kin to me. I'm going to claim you because you're all so pretty. Um, I want us to, uh, I, I want to add, uh, I don't, it's Rebecca in, the, uh, in there. Okay. And Jack in there, Ferrero. Okay, we, I had some that I was especially mindful of today. I want to take a, a, a look at a parable and look at the, at, it, um, at the principles of Jesus and what he teaches us and how to invest our lives. So as I read this story to you today, I have a few comments I'm going to make. You'll know it is so, so clear in so many ways. Any of you could get up and do better than me, but I'm up here, so I'll go ahead and say a few things. Starting with verse 14 in chapter 25 of Matthew, it says, For it is as if, I believe I get to take this off till I sing, right? For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to one two, and to another one one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. The one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his uh, master's money. After a long time, the master of the slaves came and settled uh, accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I made five more talents. His master said, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been entrusted in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed me two talents. I made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been faithful in, in, in the things that I gave you. I put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you did not scatter seeds. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours back. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You, um, you knew, uh, did you, that I reap where I do not sow, gather where I do not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the banks and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to all who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Pretty tough words there at the end. May God bless the reading and hearing of that portion of Scripture. Let us pray. Holy God, as we come to this moment, I'm reminded of the talents. I'm reminded of the call. I'm reminded of the opportunities. I'm reminded that we come here today to bring glory and honor to you. Be among us, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I, I want to help set the stage a little bit. We'll hear more about the denarius than we do the, the, the talents, okay? But a talent was about two months worth of work. So I don't know how much money you make. Don't want to know. Diane keeps up with ours because I don't have enough sense to. But let's say that you make $5,000 a month. A talent is about two months worth. So we, I'm going to use five because I like even numbers. So um, two months worth would be $10,000, okay? And so he, one got five of those, so he got $50,000. One got two talents, so he got 20000 And the other one got $10,000. So this is the kind of money that, that we're talking about, Okay. But I want you to understand very clearly, if you sit there and you're one of those that does like this, check this out, I, I'm always amazed at me because I've done it. You know, I, everything I talk about up here seems like the don'ts or things I have done. All right, and so I know. But you ever had uh, a conversation with somebody and say, are you 100 yet, man, you're having a birthday, huh? Are you, are you 100 yet? Soon, okay, a couple more years. Um, you're talking to a friend. We went to a good Italian the other night. I, I had a, 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 a lasagna and, and we had a little house salad. We, we found it to be pretty good. Now the good response to that is, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Where, where is that restaurant? Maybe we'll try it sometime because uh, if y'all enjoyed it, I trust your judgment and those kind of things. The thing not to say is, after somebody tells you that is, oh, we've got, a, we've got an Italian place down the road from my house, got the best lasagna you ever had. We generally go there once and go on and on and on. It wasn't about you. Your friend just shared what they had done. They didn't ask you about where you went. But we tend to do that, don't we? And we need to be wise and so on. So I want to tell you while you're sitting there this morning, as I share just a few minutes, a few thoughts around this text that I read to you. Do not sit there and think about, well, he said 5000 a month. I make more than that. Or I make less than that. I got 10000 huh, for for two months while I make 25000 for two. No, you're missing the sermon, honey. You just would have gone and go to sleep. You know, it isn't about money. This story uses money because it's so clear. So anybody here that don't know what 10,000 is, that doesn't know what 5,000 is, that doesn't know what 1,000, we, we understand it. So j this parable uses money to help us to understand the true meaning of this that Jesus is talking about how to invest your life in kingdom building. Now that's the main thing that I want to tell you. So don't sit there and daydream about your money and what you have and how much you have and don't have and what you're going to, uh -uh. If you do, just go and go to sleep. I'd rather have you asleep than to daydreaming about your money. I'm not going to ask you to leave. I'm not quite that rude yet, but I'm working on it. He's talking about how to invest your life for him, for his kingdom, and what you might do to help improve and grow that kingdom. You'll be given opportunities according to your abilities, you know. And not everyone has the same opportunities, and not everyone has the same abilities, you know. I can remember, uh, do y'all remember Jack Porter? And boy, he was a character. Do you remember Jack? My daddy used to bird hunt and do other things he shouldn't have done with Jack. But Jack coached the Yankees, all right, Little League. And you, that was from 8 to 12 years old. Well, I was 7 that summer, but I was going to be 8 in October, and Jack put me on his team. And I can remember he let me play in right field at least once I can remember. And I remember batting and hitting a grounder to the pitcher. I remember doing that. And, 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 and I enjoyed it. Now Mike Cochran that lived on your street was on that team. He was one of the older ones that got to play, all right? And, 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 and I, I, I think back on that. 
And I think back on how I've heard parents do and things I've heard them say. But I remember Jack telling Daddy, I believe Richard has some potential. If we work with him and, and, and he improves, he'll be playing more. And I think about how I've heard parents call the principal or call the coach and tell them, why isn't my son or daughter getting to play more? They should be getting, to, they should all play equal amount. My, my, one of my grandsons is in the ninth grade and he plays baseball. He can run fast and he's really a pretty good baseball player. And the coach does not teach, he owns a business. And he's, but he coaches at the high school. They won the state 4A championship about four years ago. He's an excellent coach. He got those boys up there, and even though my grandson is not on varsity yet, he, he calls some of them up that are doing pretty good and lets them practice with the varsity. And here's what he told them not long ago. He said, listen to me and listen close. Tell your parents not to call me and want to know why you aren't playing or why you aren't playing enough when I put the best nine players I have out there on the field, and that's who plays. You get better, you do better, and you'll get to play, but tell them not to call me because I don't want to have to tell them. Okay? You know, I think about Little League and I think about ball. God will give you a certain amount of gifts, graces, and talents. And then it's up to us to multiply them. And he, he just, uh, I, I think he just recognizes the differences in abilities. Have you ever began to realize some talents you didn't know you had? I can't talk about y'all because I, 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 I can't get away with that. But I was way down on the graduating class whenever I finished high school. I was a one talent kid. And, and, I, and I, I think about when I went back to school working six days a week, staying on the dean's list, finishing two years of college and a year and a half in Sunday school, I realized I was a two talent kid. I was never a five talent kid. But I was a two talent kid, had more ability than I realized and 19 days after I finished college at Pembroke, I was at Duke Divinity School, and I graduated there. Didn't stay on the dean's list, but I graduated. And I get to stand here today. God gives us a certain amount of ability. And our ability is not to make $5,000 or $10,000 or $100,000. Our ability is to be faithful to him and to do the things that God would have us to do. But we always complaining. You know, where did y'all go to college? I knew where I was going to college. I was going wherever Diane went. That's what I did. We went to San Hills Community College. She wanted to be a nurse. I figured I'd probably get in there to have an open door policy. I did. Stayed two years. And, and I think about that. And I had a bunch of friends that went to Carolina and NC State and East Carolina, Appalachian. Went, went to some great school. One went to Davidson, Wake Forest. Wonderful colleges and universities. And, 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 and it would have been easy for us who were community college people to, to have said, well... I don't expect to get much of a job. I don't expect to move forward very much. Can you hear me? I don't think I'm being plain. I don't think I'm being clear. It doesn't matter how much you have. It matters a lot about how much you do with what you have. And if you want to get something done, don't call on somebody that does, is, isn't doing anything because they're a do-nothing to start off with and they're not going to do anything. They are lazy. All right? Well, Skip's heart has been, been in, 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 a, in a place that uh, he's, he's not getting the strength out of it he needs and I knew he needed to quit cutting grass. And, and, and then Kendall's down there taking care of Jackie and that's where... He needs to be with Jackie. I go down. I was down there last Sunday, Diane and I. 
And, 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 and I realized them. And I said, who in the world's going to cut the grass? Oh, that's a big yard. <laughs> I had retired people to tell me how big the yard was. And then a man that runs a multi-million dollar business has 50 employees. How many hours a week are you working now? I'm not nice to Carmen. She won't answer. Um, what you laughing at? Don't you write the checks? A man that runs all that business and, has, and, and, and head of the trustees for ATMC. And, and does all this. He said, I go to ATMC on Tuesday. I'll cut the grass on Thursday. And I got people retired. That's a big yard. You know, if you want to get something done, probably if you go to a busy person, they're proven. They're proven. They can do things. And, and, and successful people are generally the ones I find... Rock not, and Rock's been very successful in life too, but he does not like for me to talk about that. The only success I'm worried about with Rock is if he'll be at my house at one o'clock today with gloves, I have shovels, and we're going to put some more dirt on the back of my pickup truck because all this rain we just had packed down the hole that we had already filled in under the platform out back. Y'all come. All right. You just, you go to successful people. You go to the five talent people or the two talent people. The ones that God is using, I, I, I wear a, a Fitbit, but begin with we had pedometers. And the conference gave them to us. They realized we were fat and lazy and we needed to watch our steps and get in better shape. And so I'll never forget this one person. We were talking about how many steps we're trying to get a day. And this one woman said, well, my well, I have my pedometer, and I've just set a goal of 2,000 steps a day. And that day, and this day, I'm reminded that not everybody has the same ability. I always said me and one more could run a cotton mill when I was young. I had high metabolism, high energy, boom, 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 let's get it done. And, and, and I did. And this person was overweight. And we were, I was in my 60s when I heard this story. And I thought, 2,000 steps? How can you even function in everyday living and just get life done and not get more than 2,000 steps? And I didn't say it, but I sure did think it. And I realized then that Diane and I set the goal of 10,000 at least 10,000. Diane's goal now is 15,000. Um, and she's got these weights. You know, I don't like her. And, and, uh, and, and, and I think about some people are just filled with the Spirit. Some people are always looking for places to give their money. That's one of the things I'm always doing with your money. Y'all put enough money in the, in the treasury, wherever Joan is. We have money in the bank, don't we? And, and, and I'm always looking for legitimate places that the church can shine. And, and, and we do that. For those of you who don't know where our money goes, one of the places we give is Brunswick Family Services. We, we, we're always giving. This church is the closest to five talent that I've known. Some of you aren't five talent. Some of you are two and maybe some of you are one. I'm a two man. I'm claiming two. I took that little bit and I doubled it. And I like to hear the words of God whenever he speaks to us. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Even though you didn't go to Carolina and went to Sand Hills Community College. Uh, well done, good and faithful service, servant. Even though you went to work at Stone's Automobiles and not the headquarters for Ford Motor Company. <laughs> well done to you who are faithful with that which God has given to you. Accomplishing a little 
is better than accomplishing nothing at all. And, and you know, uh, it's an interesting thing that sometimes we think, well, if my daddy would have started a business for me, I could have done just as good as you did. No, I couldn't. I know I couldn't. I could have never built the Shalot Electric into what Jamie Milliken has. I'm sorry I'm hitting on you so much, David. You just fit. You just situation fits. Now, you personally, I'll get on that another Sunday, all right? And, 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 and so, you know, if I could have just, if I could have just, maybe that. We, 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 we are, we are challenged, but notice whether you had the five talents or the two talents, both of them were told the same thing. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come and enter into my happiness, is what one translation of the Bible used. Come in and enter into your master's happiness. They both got that same happiness. We can always find excuses. I might have lost your money. I was scared I might lose it and you get mad. You know, I'd rather you had lost it all than to have done nothing. What a waste on that one guy. What do you think the master would have said if he'd have just put it in money market? We have a little money market account and it doesn't pay squat, but it does pay something. I bet he'd have said, well done, good and faithful servant. I didn't expect any more out of you than that anyway. That's why I didn't give you but one. You know? Now, if you'd have doubled that one, I'd have given you some more. Wicked, he calls him. And I think, of, I think about that. The reason why the master was so angry was because... He did nothing. The only real failure in life, I think, is doing nothing or giving up. You will never get to the point that God wants you to give up. Don't ever give up. Who made that great speech? Remember Val Vino? Barely could get up on the stage. I remember Coach K helped him up there, and he took off. Never, ever, never, ever. I've heard it so many times. You never come to a point in life where God tells you, you are worthless, just quit. Just going to give up. No, God does not give up on you because you are the ones that God sent his son to to be the kingdom builders. How well are you building the kingdom? When you give up, you close the door on God doing something good or even miraculous in you. The more you apply yourself, then the better I think you're going to get. Do you know on that little league team, time I was 10, I was playing center field. Regular. Because gradually I learned how to catch the ball and not drop it. I learned how to swing the bat and hit it. Was I the best player on the team? Shoot, no. But I was too talented. I was always too talented. The problem was starting out, I thought I was a one talent until God gave me a head. We got to use that which God gives us or I'm afraid we'll lose it. If God has given you the ability, the opportunity and you don't use it, I'm afraid you might lose it. I'm afraid you might lose it. I know a person who was carried to Charlotte to listen to an opera. And the leader, the teacher of that young person in high school said, I want to bring you up here because I think this is a possibility for you. That person will not sing at a wedding or a funeral today because they never realized that potential. They went in another direction. Good person. And very successful in the other direction. But they were given a talent. And they went away from that talent. Not that it's bad what they did, but they went away from it. The thing that I like the most, and this is the, the, the last thing I will say to you. It's good because I got it from Steve May. The thing I like the best about it was when they got the five talents and the two talents. Whenever you read that verse, it said, 
and, and they went immediately. They took that which God had given to them. Five talents, two talents, and they went immediately. I am going to take this opportunity. My boss with Brian and Williams in the back of company told me he promoted this guy in front of me from Greensboro to Raleigh, and I got the job in Greensboro, and he, he said he told me when he came to work here he'd been driving a drink truck for Canada Dry handling the refillable bottles back in 1970, probably about 65 when he went to work there. He said, Brandon Williamson's got some good jobs and I'm gonna make sure I get one of them. And he got promoted fairly quick and he moved on. They went immediately with their talents. I didn't know I had any talent for Jesus until I met a resurrected Lord on my own road to Damascus. And once I did, I began to realize I have things to offer to the glory of God. The worst thing I can do is nothing. Thanks be to God for the story. It calls us out not to be lazy. It calls us out to be faithful. And so we're through. All right? But we do walk them out. Please remain at your place until one of the ushers walks you out with go in peace. And this afternoon, please don't think about how much money you have or don't have or that you didn't get an opportunity. Okay? Think about what you can do for Jesus. Realize your potential. Thanks be to God for the story. It's now your story and mine. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs>